Welcome everyone. Today we'll explore the life and ideology of Epicurus, delving into ancient Greece and the lasting essence of Epicurean philosophy. Diving right into the vibrant world of Epicurus, born on the island of Samos in 341 BC, a time teeming with philosophical innovation, with revered thinkers like Plato and Aristotle influencing the intellectual fabric of the era. Their theories, like Plato's metaphysical divide between the world of forms and the empirical world, or Aristotle's categorization of virtue, acted as intellectual stimuli shaping Epicurus's own philosophical pursuits. Among these was his quest for ataraxia, or peace of mind, a quest kindled amidst a tumultuous socio-political climate following the repercussions of the Peloponnesian War. Epicurus's desire to find tranquility in such disruptive times led him to establish the Garden, a philosophical commune unique to his ethos. Contrary to superficial representations as a hedonistic retreat, the Garden was the epicenter of Epicurus's teachings, emphasizing simplicity, friendship, and philosophical contemplation as means towards achieving serenity. Acting as a refuge from societal chaos, it fostered a nucleus of philosophical inquiries propagating Epicurus's thoughts. By the founding of the Garden, Epicurus ignited an influential intellectual movement underpinned by his unquenchable desire for tranquility and understanding of the world. In the midst of Athenian intellectual vibrancy, young Epicurus's life was jostled by a transition from the bustling city to the tranquil island of Samos. Traces of influential Athenian culture lingered as he ventured on his own philosophical journey, exploring the ethereal realms of Platonist philosophy. His burgeoning ideas of the universe, initially shaped within Plato's world of abstract ideals, were soon to experience a profound transformation. Epicurus's philosophical journey took a turning point due to an increasingly felt dissonance with Platonism. Turning his gaze upon the tangible universe, he found affinity with Democritus's atomistic theories. Skeptical of the metaphysical conjecture cast by Platonism, the lure of Democritus's materialistic ideas tickled Epicurus's curious mind, awakening in him an empirical fervor. This tangible universe, discernible through empirical observation and rational inquiry, beckoned him towards a new philosophical path. Marking the inception of his unique philosophy, Epicurus championed a rigorous pursuit of truth rooted in observable reality. This empiricism, guided by rational inquiry, extended beyond mere understanding of the world. It served as the basis for an ethical life of pleasure, minimally encumbered by pain. A life not seeking happiness as an elusive goal, but an achievable process through simplicity, friendship, and reasoned understanding of the world around us. Plato's metaphysical theories initially entranced Epicurus, nudging him along a course of philosophical exploration. However, his trajectory veered sharply upon encountering atomism, as presented by Democritus, a universe constructed of complex atom dance and void. Epicurus's philosophical vista underwent a revolution, reorienting towards this more concrete, materialistic perspective. His evolving understanding of atomic complexity and the tangible cosmos informed an ethical revamp. Shaking off traditional moorings, he advocated happiness not as an elusive grail, but achievable through simplicity, friendships, and reasoned comprehension of our surroundings. Epicurus's theoretical evolution culminated in a distinct philosophical system, unfurling the tenets of Epicureanism. This demarcation from established ideologies posited individual well-being at its core. Consequently, the Garden was born, a home for philosophers in pursuit of ataraxia, a tranquil state achieved via unadorned existence and shared knowledge. More than an echo of hedonistic retreat, it formed the nexus of Epicurus's philosophical network, unequivocally rooted in his teachings, emanating ripples of influence through the annals of philosophy. A closer look reveals the ethos that emanated from Epicurus's Garden. This modest commune stood out amidst the jumble of Athenian society, its ethos sharply contrasting the dominant norms. One of the hallmarks of this newfound philosophy was the profound emphasis placed on friendship, casting it as a pivotal cornerstone to achieving happiness. Epicurus advocated for a deep bond of camaraderie and mutual respect, a stark antithesis to the competition-laden vying rampant in Athens. Delving into the intricacies of communal living, it's intriguing how trust formed the bedrock of relationships in the garden. 
The setting fostered a sense of collective responsibility, nurturing trust as a fundamental aspect of communal sustenance. This facet provided a stark contrast to a society ripe with mistrust and individualistic pursuits. Epicurus's teachings also heralded simplicity as the key to contentment. In an era where wealth and prestige were the benchmarks of accomplishment, Epicurus posited a radically different view. He underscored the idea of deriving contentment from a simple, unencumbered existence, unmarred by materialistic pursuits. In essence, the Garden of Epicurus served as a vessel of his steadfast ethos, a beacon amidst an Athenian society engrossed in social stratification, politics, and materialistic grandeur. Epicurus's journey into the depths of philosophy guided him to embrace atomism. He saw the universe as an intricate dance of atoms and void, establishing a tangible reality which can be discerned empirically. This seemingly simple yet profound proposition laid the groundwork for an ethical system woven around natural pleasures derived from simplicity and friends' communion. Turning our gaze to Epicurus's interpretation of hedonism, we find a palette of pleasures. Kinetic pleasure, as fleeting as a shared joke, contrasts with catastomatic pleasure, the longer-lasting peace reached by avoiding pain. Rejecting the misconception of hedonism as pure indulgence, Epicurus instead weaved a philosophy around moderated pleasure, the secret key to long-lasting happiness. He reimagined the pursuit of pleasure from a hedonistic sprint to an endurance race, where steadiness and moderation ensure a fulfilling life. Thus, the core tenets of Epicurean philosophy, echoing from the teachings of the garden and resonating within our day-to-day -day lives, propel us to comprehend the tangible universe for greater mental tranquility and satisfying existence. Diving into Epicurus's unique perspective on divinity, we unpack the view that gods exist but remain indifferent to human affairs. A radical departure from prevailing fears of divine consequences, this notion relieved believers of unnecessary trepidation. In his Epicurean world, gods were abstract ideals, concerns about their judgments or retributions were dismissed as futile. This liberating thought assured peace, veering one away from the futile fear of divine intervention towards the more tangible human experiences. Not to be overshadowed is his enlightening proposition on death, projecting it as an insignificant event on the landscape of the living. Death is nothing to us, enunciates Epicurus boldly, an assertion which interrupts the widespread fear of mortality. When we exist, death is not, and when death exists, we are not. With sensations and fears ceasing to exist in death, it becomes irrelevant and certainly not a cause for dread. By dispelling terror of the lifeless state, Epicurus laid out paths to tranquility, redirecting attention on the present realities and simple happiness amidst the breathing world. Intertwining the strands of divinity and death in his philosophy, Epicurus laid the stepping stones towards a life unhindered by scares of godly wrath or mortal endings, guiding the pursuit of serene existence. Epicurus's philosophical wisdom prevails through the remnants of his works we have today. Notable amongst them are his Letter to Menoesius, a detailed exposition of his ethics and principal doctrines, which imbibe fundamentals of his philosophy. Their survival opens a window into the philosophical mind of the man, offering insights into his vision of life, death, and the pursuit of tranquility. One of his enduring assertions, death is nothing to us, underlies a recurring theme in his philosophy. The dismissal of death as a triviality and the quest for tranquility as the cornerstone of a good life. It's fascinating to ponder over the complexity within the simplicity of his views, which focused on the pursuit of tranquility, the enjoyment of simple pleasures, the cultivation of friendships, and a life free from fear of gods and death. But we might be seeing just the peaks of a deeper philosophical mountain range, the loss of many of his works poses a significant challenge to fully comprehending his philosophy, the extinct knowledge possibly clutching intricate details, nuances, perhaps even counterpoints to ideas we associate with him. Epicureanism, the philosophy we now decipher in fragments, remains a testament to the timeless wisdom of Epicurus. Epicureanism's journey heralds two significant epics, the shambles of Hellenistic period post-Epicurus's death in 270 BC saw this philosophy's zenith, 
a balm to souls amid a harrowed world. Then, the flurry of Renaissance discoveries in the 15th century uncovered Lucretius's On the Nature of Things, triggering an Epicurean revival. A reconnection with Epicurean wisdom channeled through Renaissance humanism, linked epics apart by centuries yet bound by the same philosophical allure. In essence, Epicureanism's timeless appeal shone through these periods, a testament to its enduring relevance and transformative capacity. Endowed with simplicity, tranquility, and fearlessness, Epicurus's wisdom echoed through the Hellenistic chaos, sailed down the river of time, and re-emerged under the Renaissance sun, spotlighted by Lucretius's pen. The vibrant strain of these teachings that survives today owes to this legacy. The grand influence of Epicureanism through the ages hinges on a commitment to serenity, a reminder that amidst turmoil and transitions, tranquility remains a timeless quest. Epicureanism, often misunderstood, advocates not for indulgence, but for simplicity and moderate pleasure, steering us towards a path of mental tranquility. Contrary to popular belief, this philosophy doesn't reside in extravagance, but in contentment within modesty to achieve inner peace. Epicurus emphasized the pursuit of simple, moderate pleasures, avidly disputing the prevalent misunderstandings associating Epicureanism with excessive indulgence. Scholars throughout history echoed this perspective, illustrating the core philosophy of Epicureanism as tranquility and modest contentment. Correcting widespread misconceptions, they underpinned Epicurus's teachings of preferring a serene evening among friends, a simple yet profound pleasure, over lavish, meaningless expenditures. It's instructive to remember that Epicureanism posits the ultimate pleasure derives not from physical gratification, but from absence of pain and suffering. This hints at a life of moderation, dispensing any notions of luxury or excess. A common thread running through these elucidations is that Epicurus's doctrines, rather than endorsing hedonistic delights, encourages us to relish simple, lasting pleasures to cultivate tranquility, and thereby to enrich our existence. Epicurus passionately pursued tranquility, an odyssey that gave birth to a philosophy centered on pleasure untainted by pain. He counseled us to differentiate between long-lasting satisfaction and fleeting joy, emphasizing wisdom and moderation as the key to a content life. Insights from Epicurus's teachings remain relevant today, guiding us to assess our desires and incorporate mindfulness for mental tranquility. While modern life brims with superficial distractions and relentless pacing, it's fascinating how centuries-old Epicurean philosophy can offer timeless wisdom for achieving happiness. Significantly, Epicurus asserted that mental satisfaction weighed more than physical pleasure, claiming that thoughtful pleasure held the key to happiness. Interestingly, Epicurus's insights aren't just philosophical musings, but viable applications for navigating the complexities of modern life. His societal wisdom resonates powerfully today, underscoring how a rounded understanding of our desires can unlock pathways to personal satisfaction and more meaningful bonds with those around us.